I don't know how to start this one. It's beady. So we talked about average penis size. Let's talk about the average vaginal depth now. Now, disclaimer. Contrary to popular belief, I, in fact, do not have a vagina. <laughs> but that does not discount me from understanding the female reproductive system. Let's first talk about the average vaginal death while relaxed. This comes to about two to four inches, okay? This is eerily similar to the average flaccid penis size. The aroused vaginal canal expands to about five to six inches. Again, this is eerily similar to the average penis size, erect penis size. That means 70% of women are going to fall between five to six inches vaginal death. 15% will be deeper than 6 inches, and then 15% will be shallower than 5 inches. So like penises, vaginas come in all shapes and sizes, and that much should have been obvious, right? The main difference is, is that vaginas are built to stretch, unlike penises, right? So slight stretching can cause pleasure too much, though can cause pain. Now that we have a vague understanding of vaginal death, let's talk about preferred penis size, as I'm assuming 99.8% of my audience has a dinger of some sort. This study asked 80 women their preferred size for long-term partners and for a one-time partner, so one-night stands. It came back at 6.4 by 5 inches girth for the one-time partner, and 6.3 by 4.8 for the long-term partner, the husband, so to say. Now, this study used dildos, so it's not a perfect one-to-one -one ratio, but it's a good proxy for what we're trying to understand. So, while statistically significant, it's not that uncommon. About one out of every 10 men will be that long bone pressed, and one out of every five men will, are that thick. So yeah, it's definitely big statistically speaking, but it's not huge, right? It's only 30% larger. I, I mean, depends on your definition of huge at that point, but it's not like unbelievably uncommon, right? And yes, I know this goes against everything you've been told that eight inches is best, yada, yada, yada. First of all, if you don't work with inches all the time, save when you're measuring for construction and stuff like that, you are not going to have a good understanding of how long something actually is just by estimate. Second, there's a push in culture currently that large penises are better. Uh, there's pros and cons to everything, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't know if you guys can hear the fucking high school marching band. You shouldn't be able to, cool. Anyway, so let's break down the 6.4 a little bit. Because it's really not different from 6.3, that's... That just shows there's a slight novelty bias for larger penises one time night or one night stance, right? So we're just gonna act like that's the norm for right now. So first, why six point four? Fur. Why six point four? Vaginas are about six inches deep for the above average range. Even when you're fully inserting your penis, there is going to be a small portion that never makes it into the vagina. This is because you both have fat down there for padding. Just imagine if you didn't have any fat down there, it would be like bumping elbows. That would not be fun while making the beast. So let's say that takes about a half an inch to one of an inch of your fully insertable length. That would bring us down to about 5.5. Now we need to talk about the cervix. The cervix is a stiff membrane that separates the vagina from the uterus. It acts like a gatekeeper, allowing semen in, or keeping bacteria out, and then allowing the period, the menstruation, to come out when it's time. The cervix is very sensitive. A direct hit hurts. It's almost like getting kicked in the balls, but in your stomach. Even a slight graze can cause pain. Now, some women, like 5-10%, to 10 enjoy a enjoy cervical stimulation but this is more like a light nudging than it is just going to town on it so don't do this at first with any new partner talk to them about it see what they prefer 
it's going to be a common theme of good sex when I continue that series. So logically speaking, if something known to cause pain sits five to six inches back, stopping a half inch short of that leaves plenty of stimulus elsewhere. That's why the penis or the preferred penis size is not over seven inches because that just makes it very easy to hit that sensitive spot. For girth, at 4.8 to 5 inches is not super large. It is above average, but it's, again, only like one out of every five men or that thick or thicker. Now, it's hard to find a male equivalent to sensation for this, but <laughs> think about how when you like stretch out your back and if you keep going and you hit the right spot, it feels great. But if you pull your shoulders back too far, it starts to hurt. It's like that. And if you don't hit the uh, tension stimulus at all, it's kind of meh. It's kind of like that. So you not too much, not too little. That's going to be in the preferred range, obviously. However, unlike the back, vaginas tighten and loosen to accumulate the stimulus they are receiving. So even with a below average girth, the vagina will contract when stimulated and you can apply pressure to these erogenous zones i will cover that more in another video pleasure is much more nuanced for females than it is men <laughs> all right there's a lot more it's more of a gradient than it is just a build-up right and it needs its own proper in-depth look now some of you guys are going to have some comments so i'm just going to just try to answer the ones i think you're going to already have first okay but what about size queens like big penises, big vaginas exist. One out of every eight women are going to have a vagina deeper than six inches. Therefore, they will prefer a larger partner. Some women just enjoy the stretch. is a different sensation for them than compared to a normal woman. Not even normal, but a typical woman. So, that's another reason. Some women like having their cervix stimulated. Again, that's a very small part of the population. Probably about one to five percent of females. And then some women are thick and the added length helps get past their curves. And speaking from experience, it definitely does help. Okay, but what about childbirth? In 90% of cases, the vagina goes back to its original death and size after childbirth. What happens is that it loses its muscle tone, making it feel looser to both you and her, making sex less enjoyable for the time being. Normally, a woman will do some sort of physical therapy after childbirth, which is just usually a slew of kegels to tighten it back up and get it back to normal, um, I guess, tightness. And this takes about three to six months to fully recover from childbirth. Honestly, childbirth is traumatic, and gentlemen, be happy. You don't have to do this. Me and my wife had a pregnancy scare. Yes, scare. And nothing came of it but i started looking more into it and honestly it makes me want to do a video talking about all the crap that could happen while pregnant so <laughs> anyway there are cases where the vagina does change shape permanently but it's usually not as drastic as people make it seem out to be like you are not ruined after childbirth but if you follow me long enough you know i predominantly talk about male penis enlargement I'm assuming most penises are male, but whatever. So, there's definitely ways to work around it. BD, you're well hung. Why are you still trying to get bigger? So first, basically, it's my fetish. Okay? I want a very large penis. I think it's aesthetically pleasing, and it brings more pleasure to me. Is it a little bit irrational? For sure. But, it's something I want, okay? <laughs> Second, being my size at 8.8 .8 by 6.5, it definitely has its drawbacks. For one, we have to use lube no matter what. We never have quickies, and sex on back-to-back -back days is rare. However, my size does have its benefits as well. For one, I don't need to use the entire thing. This allows me to do different positions that we normally wouldn't be able to. My wife is dummy thick, <laughs> so the added length helps a good bit. I can hit the erogenous zones in the back easier. The anterior fornix and posterior fornix they will be in another video fifth you guys motivate me to continue experimenting even though it might not even be in my best interest <laughs> now something important is that 
I rarely go balls deep, even though it feels like I do. Because of the angles we use, this causes my base to cause more of like a grinding sensation on her clitoris while I enter. And when I do go balls deep, it's almost too much for my wife to handle, so we do it sparingly. Basically what I'm saying the vast majority of my time, my wife is only taking about six to seven out of my eight to nine inches. Also, it's important to note women adapt to the size of their partner. Partners of larger guys get better at relaxing, so they can stretch more, and the cervix actually retracts a bit, so it's harder to hit. Uh, this took about three months with me and my wife when we first started hooking up, and even as I got bigger, it became more, it still had the same difficulty to hit, if that makes sense. You do not want to hit the cervix. If you brag about hitting the cervix, you're kind of an asshole. Okay, females will, smaller partners will tighten up around their man as they get close to climax. So my modest men should stimulate the clitoris while they penetrate. Thank me later. I'm about to wrap this up, but let me point this out. This is preferred size, not demanded size. Okay, woman's pleasure is not as cut and dry as us men. And it's very easy to overcome a lack in size with a bit of creativity, some smart angling, but more importantly, communication and asking her how she wants it. There is nothing wrong with asking how they want you to treat their body, even if it's your wife of 10 years or a one night stand. So I'm assuming there's gonna have to be a follow up video like the penis size one. So I'm ready for it. Just let me know in the comments here or over at r slash getting bigger about your main concerns of vaginal death. <laughs> and again, I am going to be talking more about the interior and posterior fornix in another video and ways you can circumvent, say, your meager size of a few easy things you can do right now in another video. I do have a Patreon. I do sell supplements, not supplements yet. I do not sell supplements yet at Peak Male Physique, but currently I sell male enhancement aids at peakmalephysique.com. r slash getting bigger if you want to join the discussion. And this is BD signing off.